this is Daria and this set of videos will be about fingering. I will show you the main principles of how we choose the best, most effective and also most comfortable fingering when playing the piano. Even when a piece doesn't have any fingerings written in, we still have some clues and some guidelines that help us to choose. In the first video I mentioned that we distinguish between two types of fingering. One is technical and the second is expressive. So this chapter is about technical fingering. I will introduce the main guidelines to follow when choosing technical fingering. And the format will be a brief summary of each point and I will illustrate when needed. We will go through some musical examples with possible choices of fingering. So let's get started. Number one principle for technical fingering is choose the fingering in the fast tempo or the target tempo if your desired tempo is going to be slow or moderate. The reason is, in a slow tempo you can pretty much play any fingers that you want, which will not bring you any comfort in the fast tempo when it comes to that. For example, I can play a scale with the same finger over, like thumb I can use, right? And sometimes it's not about what's possible or impossible in the fast. It is about how much effort that will take. And you want to minimize your effort and maximize the efficiency. Remember that. Number two, in the fast passages, especially in the long ones, try to avoid using the same finger over and over. Alternate, engage all fingers if possible. And I want to illustrate this point by giving you two different versions of the same two measures from different editions. It's Mozart Sonata in B flat major, Köhel 333, third movement, measures 153, 154. First, there's Henley edition, for those who are interested. I've put in some fingerings on my own. And here is the Martinson and Weissman edition, that's from a Russian edition. Different type of fingering. I also made a couple changes to that fingering as well to suit me better. What you can notice they have in common is that they don't use the same fingers over and over. They try to utilize all the fingers instead of, for example, doing this, which would not be the most comfortable. Or something like this. Also, you can see that in measure 153 here, even here, there's a little change, three and then two, to alleviate the pressure from three and go to two, right, to change, and then four. That's nice, that feels really good for the hand. And in the, different, in the second edition, it's like this, it's over the thumb that I was talking about, and then four. So first five, three, and four on the same note, they had three different fingers. And the Henley edition here actually uh, bypasses the rule of the thumb, which is okay sometimes, again, sometimes we need to compromise something. This here. It doesn't sound too bad if you control it. In the second edition, it's not there. It's, there's no thumb. Actually, that's not written anything. There is nothing written, but I avoided the thumb here. I, that's the finger I used when I played three, two, and then four. Again, it's not the most comfortable thing here is to stretch like that. But as I said, I chose to not put thumb here, but then I need to stretch, which is okay. I don't want to put five here. Again, you have options, choose what's best for your hand here. So here's another example, measure 160, same piece. There's a repetitive two note groupings. And notice they have never played with the same fingers. You could choose a different combination, whatever suits you. In the Henley edition, it's a little bit different. But what you notice is what's not happening is this repetition. This is going to be tiring for the hand. 
Number three, for the shorter, fast moving passages, especially repetitive ones, try to use the most agile finger combinations. For example, two, three, four is very, very good. With some short fragment like this, especially that when it's repeated, it's the best combination to use. And try to avoid the weak finger combinations like four and five, for example, like we talked about this being a very bad choice for trill, for example. This way you will help yourself facilitate speed, agility, and you will avoid straining your hand, which is extremely important. For the trill, by the way, the best fingering choices will be either two and three, one and two, one and three, or alternating one and two and one and three, so-called Talbert's trill. You can go for a long time with those. And any other, unless you have to use those fingers, meaning the other fingers you have are doing something else, try to avoid that. So these three are the best for the trills. Number four, in the slow passages, try to choose fingers that help you highlight the musical moments of the line, the expressivity of the line. And that choice will be based on each individual finger's qualities that I will discuss in a separate short video, but I also mentioned that in uh, part one. So if you're interested, you can go back there and check uh, how each finger is different from another and what it can bring to the expressive, expressive part of your line. Number five, when repeating the same note, one note, try to avoid using the same finger. Change. Unless, of course, the musical concept or the composer is asking for it. And there are two main reasons for that. One has to do with a faster tempo where changing the finger will facilitate the speed and the resting for your hand. Because if you need to do this, the same finger over and over, this is gonna be very, very tired and you will not get too fast actually with this. While changing, for example, like this, what happens? You have one movement down and you have four notes in one motion, right? And then only, so you need to do this every four notes rather than every note, right? Plus, it, of course, it creates speed as well. The finger choice in that case, in the speed movement, will be depending on the divisions within that, on the rhythmic division, let's say. If it's divided, divided in three, a good choice would be one, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. If it's in four or if, or in two, that's good with four. Four, two, three. And the second reason is for the slower speed, this will help you highlight the color difference and the conceptual and contextual difference of the two notes that are repeated. It's unlikely that they both have the same meaning. Most likely, for example, one of the repeated notes will be the ending of the previous phrase, like something like this. And then the next one repeated will be the beginning of the second. Very simple. So changing the finger there will help you highlight that difference and bring a coloristic, beautiful effect. So you have to think about that too. Here is an example for fast repetitive notes using alternating fingering. First is going to be the Henley edition, measure 207, Mozart B flat major sonata number 13. And the second is the Martinson and Weissman edition, so just this fingering. Notice this both of them are aiming to create speed and ease with which you're gonna play. I use the Martinson Weissman fingering. Try to play that with the same finger. What happens is this your hand starts doing this and this gets tense. So you want to avoid that. The differences here will be how you treat this passage. So in terms of how are you gonna subdivide this group of a lot of repeated notes? In the Hanley edition, it suggests one, two, three, so three, two, one, three, two, one, so three and three. And then, so pretty square, like this. 
The addition that I prefer is actually one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It creates a more unsquare shape, a little bit more unpredictable. It's new, it's a nuance, but makes a big difference to me when you listen. Versus. And here's another example that is already bordering a little bit uh, on expressive fingering, but still. Why are we using different fingers here? It's measure 173 here. I use different fingering on B flat. I could also use two, three, but three is uncomfortable because going to the right later with the finger that's on your left, meaning like this, is very uncomfortable. It's better to do the opposite. So it's okay to put thumb here if you are careful with it. This rule of changing finger overrides the rule of the thumb here. You could do opposite. And the next measure, there are four notes that are repeated. And the uh, Henley edition suggests two, one, two, one, highlighting the pairs of notes. One, two, one, two. And the first pair would be a little louder, and the second pair a little lighter. Just of the roll in the measure is like that. You can see that they are different contexts. They place different in a different place in the measure, which gives them different meaning. Plus, meaning of these notes would be with this type of fingering, and then new. So these four notes would belong to this. In the Martinson Weissman edition, which I used, is this way. So you could be two. What's the difference here? Um, this is one note and then three notes. How can you treat those three notes? You could three, uh, three there will be pom pom pom, ricochet from each other. So this note would belong to the first three pom pom, and then three notes pom pom pom, farther and farther away. You can also treat those three notes pom pom pom, go into here. So conceptually different because in this context you can treat them as boom, 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 going here or disappearing from boom, 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 boom. right the left hand here repetition measure 186 187 so um Henley suggests three two one three two one it's a like boom 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 right boom 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 And Martins and Weissman suggests here they're going opposite. Two, one, two. Um, why one? Because it creates a, a pulsation, a little stronger, rather than right? Different shape. I actually use, I avoid the thumb here and I use two, three, two, uh, three, two, three, which creates a little softer um, stroke on this. Because I hear it as pum 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 rather than pum 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 pum. But that's uh, an expressive choice. But again, none of these suggest you repeat it with the same finger because it's just uh, they're not they don't have the same meaning. These notes. There is the slower motion example of changing the fingering. It is bordering on expressive fingering because how it treats those notes. It's more conceptual than technical, but. Both elements are important here. I just wanted to show you a little uh, snippet of the Chopin C minor nocturne, opus 48, number one. It's gonna be measure 11, 12. There's gonna be a line where I switch from three to two. Notice how it's gonna sound. Because it belongs to you, and then 
that note is in a very different state and a very different quality has a very different meaning it's a part of the embellishment a light and then different meaning it's a statement here so if i use the same finger it becomes more blurred the distinction between the two meanings of the e flat is almost non-existent so it helps to show that with changing from three to two and then following section especially in the piano dynamic to make that note sparkle because the three finger is um, a very good finger for melodic notes because it's stable and it's going to stand out nicely like a very piercing sound and four is perfect for ending a phrase because it's a lighter Even though the phrase is kind of going ta 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 up, but you don't want it to be too aggressive. Now three on the melodic note and two on the embellishment is softer. It's two can maneuver very nicely. It can be gentle right after the three. So that line was shaped nicely because of the finger choice and because you emphasize that the repeated notes did not have the same meaning. And just to give you a comparison with two other editions besides Henley, there was Jan Ekier's National Edition and Paderewski Edition. You can see the little differences here. For example, in measure 12, Jan Ekier's edition suggests two on the black key, C sharp, one on D, followed by five, four, three, and then two on the repeated note, so three, two. The same measure is treated a bit differently at Paderewski edition, where you can see sliding thumb, thumb from C sharp to D, and then four, three, two, and then back to three on the repeated note, so two, three instead of three, two. However, they both follow that rule of changing the finger on the note to emphasize the difference of the, in the meaning here, because of the slow tempo. And then you can see in measure 15, in um, Paderewski edition, actually he doesn't give you anything. It's kind of um, implied fingering there because he assumes you know the rule. And, but he does give you a two on the embellishment later on in that measure on the E flat. And you can see that in Ecker's edition, he does give you a three on the piano note on G on measure 15. And then again, two on that embellishment on E flat. So you can notice you have freedom of choice here to your comfort as long as you follow that guideline of not repeating the same finger on the repeated note in order to emphasize the different meaning of the note.